Hello. Welcome to our at least 15th, maybe more, annual tradition at Ross Montessori of wax museum presentations. You will see here some lovely wax museum figures right behind me. This would be the Black Bear Edition 2020. Hope you enjoy. Thanks. Guten Abend. I am Robert Boyle and I like chemistry. I was eight when I first got an interest in science. I was born in 1627 or Ireland, Waterford County. I was actually friends with Galileo. I died in 1691, London, England, probably in a duel, but I don't know because I was dead. By the way. When I, oh, by the way, when my mom, Catherine Felton, and my dad, Richard Boyle, found out, they were devastated. But, 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 but before I died, I changed the world. I made a, I made one more chemistry law, Boyle's law, a law that states when law that states the gas of pressure goes down when the volume of pressure goes up. After all? After all the tests for my law, I decided that I was done with chemistry for a while. After all the time off, I Went to go see. I went to go see my mom. By the time I got there, my dad was dead. Thank you for hearing my life story. Sincerely, Robert Boyle. Bonjourno. I'm Florence Nightingale. When I was a baby, I traveled all over Italy. I I loved traveling. I also loved math and science. And whenever I traveled to a new places, I would note down how many people lived there and how many hospitals were there. I love numbers too. Later I started studying um, nursing. Then I became good at it. The government sent me to a hospital for injured soldiers in Turkey. As soon as I arrived, I started collecting and examining all the data I could find. I discovered that most of the soldiers died not because of their wounds, but in the hospital. I made sure that everyone working there at the hospital, washed their hands frequently, and kept everything clean at night. I carried a lamp as I made my rounds, talking to my patients and giving them hope to them. Thanks to me, many more soldiers made it home safely. I was born May 12, 1820. I lived until August 13, 1910. I attribute to my success, I, I never gave or took any excuse, Florence Nightingale. I'm Cora Ten Boom. I live in Harlem, New York. I have three siblings, Betsy Ten Boom, Arnold Ten Boom, and Lillian Ten Boom. I'm a watchmaker, and I'm the first woman in Harlem to be a watchmaker. We are a very happy family. We have two sisters, one brother, two aunts, and three uncles. We never turned down a person for a home or a friendly conversation. Things seemed like they would never change, but things changed fast. World War II had begun. Number one. I heard gunshots. Oh, I heard gunshots in Jewish shops. Hitler thought people who didn't think the same way he did should die. There was there was an explosion that shook me from my sleep. Two people knocked on the door. They were in hiding. Soon there were six people hiding in our house. I a designer. A designer came and built a secret door. Once he was done, we practiced this escape plan time after time. The day we feared came. A Jewish, no, sorry, a German officer marched through the door. Where are you hiding the juice? I don't know what you're talking about. He slapped me across the face, but I said nothing. I went to jail with my father and sister. My dad and sister died in prison. I moved to the worst room in prison of all. A miracle. We had to spend hours standing in the cold. A miracle happened. I was free. Years later, I received a letter that said there was a paper issue that saved my life. I, I 
died on my 91st birthday, April 15th, and I saved more than 800 people during World War II. That, and that is my story. Hi, I'm Ruth Washington. In February 22nd, 1932, I was born. My father was a landowner and planter. When I was just 11 years old, he died. My brother Lawrence made sure I was educated in basic subjects like reading and math. I'm known for leading the Continental Army in two victory in the British American Revolution. Eight fun facts about me. I was the first president of America. I was six feet tall, which was very tall for the 1700s. I never served as president in Washington, D.C., the capital of Maine. I was the only president the moms did. My wife, Martha, and I never had kids of our own. I was the commander of the Continental Army. But I was very honest, the story of the cherry tree probably never happened. I have many different sets of dentures throughout my life. I am one of the most popular presidents of the United States. On one rainy, cold day on December 14th, 17. Hello, my name is Malala Yousafzai. I was born July 12, 1997 in Lingora in the Swat Valley of Pakistan. My father ran the Kushaw Girls High School in college. I was one of the top students at this school. In 2007, when I was 10, the Taliban invaded the Swat Valley. The Taliban is a group that, that believes in strict Islamic law. When they took control of the valley, they began shutting down schools for girls. They didn't allow women to participate in society. In 2008, I gave my first speech. It was called, How Dare the Taliban Take Away My Basic Right to Education. Then, using a pen name, I wrote about my daily life living under the Taliban. In 2011, I was awarded Pakistan's National Youth Peace Prize. On October 9th, 2012, I was happy and proud as I climbed into the bus that was more like a pickup truck with a roof and three rows of seats. I was sitting, oh wait, I had studied for a test and thought I had done well. I was sitting with some high school girls and three teachers. I was singing and talking with my friend Monaba. Suddenly the bus stopped. A man with a gun looked into the back of the bus. Who is Malala, he asked. A few girls looked at me. He followed their eyes and saw me. The man pointed his gun at me and pulled the trigger. I was brought to a hospital in Birmingham, England. There were messages from government leaders, diplomats, and movie stars. Beyonce had wished me well on Facebook, Madonna had dedicated a song to me, and Selena Gomez had tweeted about me. There was even a message from Angelina Jolie. It was overwhelming. Doctors operated behind my ear, trying to repair the facial nerve that had been cut open by the bullet. This nerve allowed me to open and close my left eye, ra smile, and raise and lower my left arm. If they do not fix it soon, my face will be paralyzed forever. They fixed it, and since then, I have spoken at many events and received many awards. I am the youngest person ever to have received the Nobel Peace Prize. I am still alive today. Greetings. I am Helen Keller. I was born on June 27th in 1880 in Tuscumbia, Alabama. My mother's name was Kate and my father's name was Arthur. I lived on a big farm with lots of animals. When I was 19 months old, I became very ill. I had a high fever for many days. Suddenly, the fever faded away. My parents were happy for me, but they realized something was wrong. When my mother called my name, I could not hear her. Soon my parents realized I was deaf and blind. Uh, I, had uh, to learn. I had to learn how to live in the dark. Around age eight, my parents decided to hire a teacher. Her name was Ann Sullivan. She tried to help me like spelling words into my hand. 
I spelled them back into Anne's hand, but I didn't quite understand what I was doing. At, eventually, at age 10, I learned to talk. I also learned that Anne Sullivan was blind, but she got her eyesight back by surgery. In 1900, I went to Radcliffe College in Massachusetts. I became the first deaf and blind person to graduate from American College. I also became one of the most famous women in America. I didn't just speak English, but I also spoke, uh, I also spoke French, German, and Greek. I helped wounded soldiers to not give up no matter what. I died June 1st. 1968, when I died at home June 1st, 1968, I was 87 years old. My, I lived most of my years in the dark, but my determination brought hope to other people around the world, especially the ones with disabilities. Ever wondered how doctors know about diabetes so much? Well then, let me tell you my story. Hi, I'm Gertie Corey. I, I was born August 15, 1896, in Prague, Czechoslovakia, or as you know now, Czech Republic. I, my dad was a, a biochemist. He invented a, a method for refining sugar, and my uncle was a pediatrist. He's the one who inspired me into studying medicine. When I was a kid, I had private schools and tutors until the age 16 when I decided to go to college to study medicine. That's where I earned a medical degree for studying hormones and enzymes related to processing sugar. When I was older, I helped doctors understand more about diabetes and I was the first and third American woman to win, to ever win a, a Nobel Prize in biology or medicine. I was a biochemist teacher in 1947 when I moved to St. Louis, Missouri in 1922. In 1957, I got myelofibrosis, a rare blood disease of which I sadly died in October 26, 1957 in United States, St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, hello, you caught me in the middle of making a bracelet. I suppose you want to hear about the Lewis and Clark expedition. About how I came to accompany Lewis and Clark on their journey to the Pacific. Alright, let's get started. Oh, by the way, my name is Sacagawea, and that means bird woman or boat pusher in my native language, Shoshone. I was born in May in 1789 or 1790 in what is now Lemhi County, Idaho, in a small Shoshone village. We traveled with the seasons and were happy. But one day, when I was 10 or 11, the Minotauri tribe attacked us. The Minotauri were a rival tribe with guns. My tribe did not have guns. I was taken captive and given to the Minotauri family. And later, I was given in marriage to, to Saint Charbonneau, a local French Canadian fur trader and friend of the Minotauri. Uh, by the time I was 15, I was expecting a child. But before my baby could be born, strangers came to the village. It was the Lewis and Clark expedition sent by President Jefferson to explore the large plot of land the country had recently purchased from France. They needed a Shoshone translator to help them purchase horses from my tribe. So, my husband enrolled us in the Corps of Discovery. That is what the men called themselves. On February 11, 1805, I became a mother to a healthy baby boy. My husband named the child Jean-Baptiste Charbonneau, but I called him Pa um, which means firstborn. Uh, Captain Clark loved the baby with all his heart and called him Pomp. Soon, everybody called the boy Pomp. The journey was long. My husband spilled a boat. I saved his supplies. We crossed mountains, rivers, and plains. My husband, Captain Clark, Pomp, and I narrowly avoided a flash flood. I saw my brother as chief of my tribe. We crossed more mountains, rivers, and plains. Um, and then one day, finally, after more than 2,200 miles, we reached the Pacific Ocean. We set up camp and spent the winter there. Then we returned on the very same path we had come. I was the only woman, the only teenager, the only one with a baby, and one of the only two unpaid members of the first official American party 
reached the Pacific Ocean. The other unpaid member was Captain Clark's slave, York. We settled again in the village where I had been introduced to Charbonneau. Later, we moved to St. Louis. Next spring, Charbonneau plans to take me on a fur trading trip up the Missouri. Six-year-old Pomp will be left in St. Louis, where he will receive care and an education from Captain Clark and his wife, Julia. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to finish this bracelet. Hola, I'm Roberto Clement. I was the first Latino in the U.S. to play MLB, or Major League Baseball, and I hit the Hall of Fame. When I was a kid, I was not the guy you would look for to get errands done. Even my mom couldn't count on me. I'd send him to the store and he'd be gone for hours, she said. He'd have found a baseball game somewhere. <laughs> when I was 14, a scout named Roberto Marin recruited me for the top amateur team because he was impressed at how far I could hit uh, empty tomato cans with a stick. <laughs> I played with the Santos Crabs in the Puerto Rican Winter League. In the early 50s, a fellow was impressed with my arm. That fellow was the famous Willie Mays of the New York Giants. Unfortunately for the Giants, the Willie didn't have the authority to sign me, but the, but the daughter scout Al Campani did. When I was, f in 1954, when I was 19, I, I signed with the Dodgers for a $10,000 bonus and, and $5,000 a year. The, the owner of the Dodgers told me, find yourself a, good, a nice wife, so a, a nice woman to marry and settle down with her. Then you can concentrate on being the superstar you are. My dad said, Buy yourself a good car and don't depend on anyone. <laughs> Adios y buenas suerte. <coughs> Bye and good luck. The Dodgers sent me to their top minor league team in Montreal, where I quickly discovered the difference between playing on the road and playing at home. I studied English in high school, but never needed to speak it until I joined the team in Montreal. In 1955, the Pittsburgh Pirates drafted me under the boldest rule. The Pirates I joined were hopeless. During the 50s, the Pirates finished last five times and next to last three times. The first time I went to the plate as a Pirate, I slammed a single off Dodgers pitcher Donnie Padres. Pirate fans knew they'd have one fan to celebrate. Before I stepped into a big league ballpark, I was in an accident where a drunk driver skidded into my car. Don't drive drunk, kids! I spent so much time at chiropractors and physical therapists, I was an expert on bad backs. During the winter in Puerto Rico, people in pain would stagger to my door at all hours. I would tell them I never turned them away. I'd tell them to lay on my pool table in my basement. And I'd need their sore, need their sore muscles and work their crooked spine straight. Many swore I had magic in my hands. Adios. Have you ever wondered how women and men have equal rights? Well, my name is Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and let me tell you how I helped make that happen. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, March 15th, 1933. I grew up in Brooklyn with my mom and dad. My dad owned a coat and hat shop. My mom always thought I should get an education, but my dad thought that women and girls should stay home cook cleaning lots of kids. But I still went to school. Sadly, the day before I was about to graduate high school, I got the horrible news that my mom had died from cancer. Eventually, I got a job as a professor at Rutgers Law School teaching civil procedures. Then I decided I wanted to become a lawyer or a judge, so I enrolled at Cornell University, and I got in as one of the 10 women that were able to go to school there. In college, I met a man named Marty. He supported all my decisions and theories. He believed in me even when no one else did. He also believed that women should be accepted just like men. At, we got married and had a baby named Jane. After that, Marty got diagnosed with cancer, and I had to take care of him, Jane, and go to school, all while making Harvard Law Review. Marty got better, and I got into Harvard and got my law degree. I took six gender equality cases before the Supreme Court. For example, I took one in 1975 for Stephen Weisenfeld. His wife had died having a baby, and so he decided that he could not work full-time until his son was going to school. 
He found out that the Social Security had benefits for single parents, but he could not get those benefits because they were a woman's benefits. And that shows that men were affected by discrimination also. I got appointed by President Bill Clinton to join the Supreme Court on August 10, 1993. I was the second woman and the first Jewish female ever in the United States to serve the Supreme Court. While on the Supreme Court, I had surgery for two types of cancer, broke three ribs, and never missed a day of work. Sadly, I passed away September 18, 2020 in Washington, D.C. at the age of 87 from cancer. I became known as the notorious RBG for my strong dissenting opinions and significant advancements toward equal rights for women. Hi, I am Nelson Mandela. Let me introduce you to my story. I was born on July 18, 1918 in Alexandria, South Africa. My father died when I was nine years old. I was sent away to live with a powerful chief named Jagitaba. My birth name was Roli Hawa, which means troublemaker. On July 18 is a day dedicated to me and my work. People are asked to devote 67 years to helping others. Because of the 67 years I dedicated to me, my country, I studied law too. I also knew there were unfair laws that separated whites, blacks, and Indians. I was serving my country. I would spend 27 years in prison because I was a, in protest against our Sadly, I died on December 5, 2013 in Donnersburg, South Africa. I will always remember what I did to help the world. Hi there, I'm Diane Fossey. I was born January 16, 1932 in San Francisco, California. My parents, George E. Fossey III and Catherine Kitty Fossey divorced when I was three. Then my mother remarried a businessman named Richard Price. He did not treat me very well. I worked hard and I went to college to become a therapist for disabled children. I loved my job, but I wanted to see the world. In 1963, I used all my savings and borrowed money from the bank to travel to Africa. I lived among the gorillas in the Virunga Mountains of Rwanda, one of the last wild gorilla habitats left in the world. Unlike other researchers who just watched the animals, I acted like one of them. I got down on my knees and knuckles, munched on the sangreens they did, and mimicked the sounds they made. I often battled with poachers. These are hunters who kill gorillas illegally and sell their babies to zoos. On December 27th in 1985, I was found in my campsite murdered. My killer has never been found, but he was probably one of those poachers. Even though I am dead, my work still goes on today. One of my gorillas, Poppy, is still alive today. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Ken Myers. I was born, I was born on November 1st, 1918 in Sutton Coldfield, Warwickshire, England. My parents were Eric Miles and Clarice Jarvis. I met my wife at age 15. I went to school and left at age 15. I went to technical school. I had a son named Peter Myers. When I, when I left school, I went to Wolseley Murder, Murders as an apprentice. I started racing when I was 11. I made a car? I made a car called the Flying Shingle. I shared the Ford GT40 MK2 with Bruce McLaren. I also was a military man. 
and a world sports car champion. My death changed the racing world. I was in the British Army for four years. Then I worked for Shelby. Then me and Shelby moved to Ford. We built a car for Ford called Ford GT40 MK2 for a race called Le Mans, a 24 hour race. Ferrari was there. We beat them. We were the first company to beat Ferrari. I also made a car for Porsche called Porsche 559. I died in August 17, 1966 on Riverside International Raceway in California due to a car crash. I'm Ken Miles. Thanks for listening to my story. Hola, my name is Julia de Burtos. Let me tell you about me. I was born on February 17, 1914 in Puerto Rico. I grew up as a farmer. I was the oldest out of three siblings. I was the only person out of my siblings that went to university. I started being a teacher because I love kids, so I was super patient with them. Every time I was stressed out, I would write a poem. Mm -hmm. Then I realized that I loved doing poems. I started writing one every day. After my first poem came out, named Rio Grande de Loizo, Loiza, I married Ruben Rodriguez Bauncham. But after we got divorced, then after we got divorced, then I fell in love with Armando Marin. I got with him and moved to California. But then they told me I had cancer. I started drinking alcohol because of depression. Sadly, I died on July 6, 1953, at age 39. I will always remember that I gave beautiful poems to the world. I am Julia de Burtos, and this is my story. My name is Pocahontas. I'm a Native American princess. I was born in Jamestown, Virginia, 1596. I live with my dad, Chief Powhatan. He's a chief of more than 30 tribes. My mom died in childbirth. After she died, my dad sent me to go live with my grandma, grandpa, and other cousins. He came to visit sometimes. We had a special bond. My family educated me. I did not go to school. At, together at night, sometimes we would dance. I loved to dance. In 1613, a group of English men founded a settlement on the James River. They were not doing well. It was hard for them to find food and water. Many of them died. One man, John Smith, was captured by the Pohan tribes. I didn't he was going to be put to death, but I did not want to see him hurt, so I saved his life. And line? 1613, I was taken. In 1613, I was taken prisoner by the English. They wanted to negotiate with my father, but my father refused. So I continued to live with the settlers. One man, John Ralph, fell in love with me. He asked me to marry him, and I said yes. Later on, we had a son named Thomas. In May 1616, we sailed to England. There we met the British King and Queen. I became very famous in London. A year later, we sailed back home. Unfortunately, it was a long journey and I died soon after. Hello, my name is Nikola Tesla. I was born in the Austrian Empire, July 10, 1856. My mother was Georgina Tesla. Milton Tesla was my father. I also had three sisters and one brother, Dane Tesla, who died in a horse riding accident when I was seven years old. I went to an Austrian elementary school and then went to Graz University to, and studied engineering. I got a job, job for Thomas Edison in Paris uh, and then moved to the U.S. and continued working for him. He told me, Tesla, Tesla, if you make a motor, pay you a bunch of money. Hmm. So, I did. I asked, he still paid me normally, and so I asked and he said, Tesla, you don't understand our American humor. <coughs> Shortly after I quit my job for him, uh, and did some high voltage experiments in the night, or did some high voltage experiments. Uh, 
but then my lab got flooded. So I moved to Colorado and invented the Tesla coil. Uh, I, I moved to Colorado and invented the Tesla coil. Uh, then I did some more high voltage experiments. And um, I also invented the electromagnet. Uh, yeah, I invented the x-ray machine and took one of the first x-rays on my hand. The x-ray machine is used around the world in hospitals to find broken bones. Um, to find broken bones. I pursued? I pursued the idea of wireless lighting and worldwide wireless electric power. I tried to put these ideas to practical use in my Warden Clive Tower project. I did some experiments in the 1910s and in the 1920s. And during the 1930s, I ran out of money. And during the rise of Hitler, I told, I told the army that I had created a laser weapon that could, destroy, uh, that could destroy enemy planes from a distance. I never did. I died in the New Yorker A. Weintem Hotel, January 7th, 1943. Oh, dang it. I put the spring in the wrong place. Can you hand me the wrench? Oh, um, you're there. Sorry, I was in the middle of building an engine. So you probably want to know a little bit about me and how I started building fancy cars. My name is Enzo Ferrari, and I was born on August 14th, on February 18th, 1898, and I died on August 14th, 1988, and was buried near Medina, Italy, and my siblings, were named Laura, Dino, Piero, and Alfredo Jr. And my parents were na and my parents were named Adelisa and Alfredo. Um, I started building cars around age 40. In 1938, I started my company, Ferrari. The company's original choice for the first Ferrari was yellow, but it ended up being red. In 1940, World War II, Dolly Dolan showed the first Ferrari. The first Ferrari got launched around 1946, but only two, but only two of the first models were made. Around 1950, my company made a fully electric car that did not pollute a lot. I, uh, I grew up in Modena, Italy, and went to school at Alma Mater Studio, and that's how I started building supercars. Ciao now, I have to finish building this engine. I got a deadline, you know. Thanks. Brand Chanel? Well, I'm Coco Chanel, but my real name is Gabriella Chanel. And to answer your question, yes, I am the creator of Chanel. Let me tell you a little bit about my life. I was born on August 19, 1883, in France. My mother was Jean de Ball, and my father was Albert Chanel. I was very poor growing up, and my father would go and sell clothes to make some money for the family. When I was only 14, my mother died from tuberculosis, and after my mother died, my father left the family. Then me and my four siblings got sent to an orphanage. I did not go to school, but I got taught by nuns. After I left the orphanage, I worked as a cabet singer, where my name became, where I became known as Coco. I opened my first shop in 1909. At first, I only sold hats, but soon after, I sold luxur luxury uh, clothes, fabric, and jewelry. Um, my clothes were custom made only using the highest quality fabric. My company made a lot of money, and people all over the world bought my fashion. 
My most famous product was perfume number five, which made me one of the richest women, women in the world. My, I'm, even today I'm regarded as an icon of, icon of style and my classic designs, and my classic designs still inspire fashion to this day. After, I mean, on January 10th, 1971, after, after coming back from a walk with my friend, I died on my bed at the hotel resort at the age of 87. Thank you for listening. Can you be an actress or an inventor? Well, I'm Hedy Lamar. I was born Hedwig Eva Marie Maria Kiesler on November 9th, 1914 in Vienna, Austria. I also grew up in Vienna, Austria with my mother, Gertrude Kiesler, and my father, Emil Kiesler. I was discovered by an Austrian film director as a teenager. I gained international fame in 1933 with my role on the film, Esctasy. I went to the United States and signed a contract with the Metro Goldwyn Mayer Studio in Hollywood under the name Hedy Lamar. Upon the release of my first American film, Al Algiers, co-starring Charles Boyer, I became a box office sensation. I was often referred to one of the most gorgeous and exotic of Hollywood's leading ladies. I also made quite a bit of well-received films in the 30s and 40s. Some of my films were Lady of the Tropical in 1939, co-starring Robert Taylor, Boomtown in 1940 with Clark Gable and Spencer Tracy, and more. In 1942, the greatest part of my career, I earned a recognition other than entertainment. Me and my friend, the composer George Athneal, received a patent for an idea of a radio signaling device or a secret communication system. which can change radio frequencies to keep enemies from decoding messages. My film career was going down in the 50s. My last film was in 1958. It was The Female Animal with Jay Powell. In 1966, I published a best-selling autobiography, Ask to See and Me. I was arrested for shoplifting twice, once in 1966 and again in 1991. Mm -hmm. I was married six times and adopted his son, James, in 1939 during my second marriage to Jean Markey. I also had two biological children, Denise, born in 1945, and Anthony in 1947, with my third husband, John Muir. I sadly died on, in Castleberry, a community near Orlando, Florida, on January 19, 2000, at the age of 85. Thank you. Oh, hello there. I'm Jane Goodall. I was born April 3rd, 1934, London, England. From a young age, I dreamed of working with animals in the wild. At just 26, I traveled to Gombe National Park in East Africa to study chimpanzees. I had a hard time interacting with the chimps at first. It was, I, they often ran when I approached them. After a few months, they started to accept my presence in the world. I battled many poachers. What poachers do is they kill animals or sell them to zoos. Um, I realized how similar they are to humans. That I, I realized how similar the chimpanzees are to humans. That they make tools. I saw that they have friendships and that they sometimes go to war over food and mates. My favorite chimp was called David Graybeard. Funny name, huh? Um, later, I started the longest running institute, Funning Chimps. And to this day, I'm still helping chimps live a healthy and safe life. Thank you for listening. Hi. My name is Muhammad Ali, Muhammad Ali, or Cassis Clay, or the greatest, but for now, just call me Cassis Clay. It, I boxed since I was 12, and I, and I, re, and, some, and it started when someone stole my bike, and I told the police officer, Joe Martin, and I told him I was gonna whoop whoever stole my bike. And then, uh, 
he told me first you have to learn how to fight before you go fight anybody. So in Joe Martin's spare time, he teaches kids how to box and he um and he taught me how to box and I ran in heavy boots to uh, strengthen my feet and um, build up my lungs. And, and soon I was boxing. Soon I was boxing on the on tomorrow's champions, a local TV show. My method was to sting like a bee, or um, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. I, I, when I realized that there was only white only restaurants, parks, and, and water fountains, that, that, I threw my oh, um, my gold medal in the Ohio River. I wanted to be the best boxer for helping racism, so I so I became the best boxer, and and I went really fast um, at punching and dodging. And, and, but then I broke a jaw um, from another boxer who, um, I had to stop, or the fight had to stop, but I still boxed and won. And uh, I wrote books. And retired in 1981, and then died from, or died in, um, in June 3rd, 2016. Hi, I'm the fastest woman of all time. My name is Florence Griffith Joyner, also known as Flojo. I was born in Los Angeles, California, December 21st, 1959. I was a young African American, and I, and I started running at seven, and I had 10 siblings. My daughter was Mary Ruth Joyner, and my husband was A.L. Joyner. When I was young, I would race jackrabbits, and I, ran, I won three gold medals in the Summer Olympics game in Seoul, South Korea in 1988 in the 100 and 200 meter run. In the 100 meter run, I ran 10.49 seconds. I I died in 1998 from epileptic seizure. Ep I don't know. Epileptic. Epile 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 epileptic seizure. Um, my records remain unbroken. Maria Talsh. I was born on January 24, 1925 in Fairfax, Oklahoma. I grew up in Oklahoma and moved to California at age eight. My mother's name was Ruth Mary Porter and my father's name was Alexander Joseph Tulsa. My father was an Osage tribal member and my mother was, a des was descended from the Scots-Irish pioneers. Me and my sister Marjorie played piano and danced. My mother saw how talented we were and didn't think we would get the education we needed in Oklahoma. 
So when we moved to California, the first thing I went to see was the ocean. In California, I studied with a number of piano and dance teachers. When I was 12, my father told me I had to choose between dance or piano. I chose to focus on dance. When I was 17, I traveled to New York City to see the Ballet Rush. The company asked me to join them. One of the choreographers, George Balanchine, even asked me to marry him. We got married in the summer of 1946 in New York City. George started a brand new dance company, the New York City Ballet. He created more roles just for me. Um, in 1949, I performed in Firebird, the ballet that made me the first ever Native American to be a prima ballerina. I danced with New York, new York City Ballet until 1965. When I retired, I opened a dance school in Chicago, passing down my love and knowledge for ballet to the next generation of ballerinas. All in all, I had a good life, starting from a reservation in Oklahoma all the way to dancing at the New York City Ballet. And no matter what color skin you have, that does not change who you are. I died on April 11, 2013 at age 88. Computers speak English? Well, I'm Grace Hopper, and I'm going to tell you my story. I was born on December 9th, 1906 in New York. When I was seven, I took apart all of my family to long class to see how they work. When I was 28, I earned a master's degree of mathematics at Yale University in 1934. The Navy assigned me to Harvard University to program one of the first ever electronic computers. Since I was nine, my mother Mary took me to the lake almost every day, and I sometimes bring my vessel. Until one day, there was wind so big that I fell in the water. Then I was on shore, and my mom yelled, Remember your great-grandfather, Admiral Russell? Yes, my great-grandfather was in the Navy, too. Let's talk about that, shall we? <laughs> the attack of Pearl Harbor dragged America into World War II. Thousands of men got shipped off to fight until there were enough men to fight. So the military began admitting women, very, very reluctantly. <laughs> I was already a seasoned sailor. My application to the Navy was reject rejected because I was 34. But I applied again, and they accepted my application. If I was a, if I was a man, I have already been fighting. In 1941, I had been a college mathematics professor for 10 years. After hearing the news, I brought flowers to my great-grandfather's grave and they sent me to the Barrel of Ships Contribution Project at Harvard. I, I appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman in 60 Minutes. I was famous for my cut wire showing the distance that electricity travels in a nanosecond. Nanosecond, I mean. I had a backward clock in my office to remind myself that things don't have to work just one way. Mm. I received a Defense Distinguished Service Medal. In 1943, I quit my job to join the Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency De Service WAVES. I had a Jolly Welder power flag on my desk because, hold on, one second, because I was rentless and getting what my team needed. When I saw the Mark I, I thought to myself, gee, that's the prettiest gadget I ever saw. <laughs> I dated a few men, but got divorced, so I had no children whatsoever. Until 1992, I died in my sleep when I was 85 on January 1st, New Year's Day. Thank you for participating to my story. Have a wonderful day. Bye.